Good evening, folks. Kent Hoven here and the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama. Drove half the night, got in at 3.30 this morning. I'm a little off schedule, <laughs> a little off schedule here, so I can try to get some sleep tonight. It is uh, May the 3rd, 2018. If you want to come to Dinosaur Adventureland, come on down. We're having a blast here. You can get baptized here if you want. We still need some concrete dinos, go through the announcements, and then get to an interesting topic tonight. Um, let's see, if you want to help us build Dinosaur Adventureland or stay open, we're open for free. Uh, had, you, I told you about the uh, deputy police officers coming today. Yeah, you can have a, uh, uh, invite, a, a pre off, uh, law enforcement appreciation day. Have them all come bring their families. Uh, be cool for the whole county. So they're all excited about it. Especially when I told them free barbecue ribs. Say, whoa, yeah. Okay. I was taping the last couple days with Michael Rood. Had a wonderful time. He asked me to cover, we said, Brother Hovind, would you please cover the flat earth controversy? I said, Brother, I have avoided that like the plague for months, but okay. He kept me up for two nights at that motel. I should have been sleeping, but no, I had to work on slides and stuff. So I thought, I'm going to share that with you, the stuff I've co covered. I think I understand not only the problem, but why this is an issue. Why is this come up? Since 2012, this flat earth stuff has gone crazy. I think I know why. I'll show you. We need about $10,000 for an excavator. It's going to be sold soon if we don't get it. They're worth like 30000 bucks, and the guy's hurting for money and needs it like 10000 bucks. And I talked to the concrete company today in Evergreen Concrete. They, they, like, they want to get our sand, and we sell them sand. And so, but they have to bring their machine out to load their own truck. If we had an excavator here, they could only bring the truck and we load it up. It'd, so it'd save us. We could make a bunch of money. And, and we could use it for a year, do all the work we need, and then sell it and make 20000 off it. So if you want to help us get an excavator for 10000 bucks, we'd like to get one like tomorrow. Uh, some people, that's just pocket change. I don't understand that. That's, that's not my world I live in. <laughs> I scrape, scrape $10 together. Anyway, if you want to be a missionary to DAL for the summer, come on down. We could put you to work down here, be a tour guide, the soul winner. As I travel and speak, I need people here that love the Lord, that can know, give the tours and do the science demos and all that stuff. Uh, we need a forklift. Uh, Rhonda has a list of all the other stuff we need. We need lots of nails and screws and bolts and nuts. We're always using them. Jeff, how many have we gone through here? Bu buckets, boxes. Buckets, boxes yeah. of them. Yeah, and we got more to do. Now we got the two bunkhouses. We got to put bathrooms in there, electrical, plumbing. If you can spare a few days, come on down. We can put you to work. We got to get those set up into apartment buildings. Uh, let's see, a pine cone of sorts. We don't need any more pine cones. We got plenty of those. Uh, what else? We need. Uh, uh, two and a half ton HVAC unit. We mentioned that the other day. Heat pump. If you know somebody's got one to, for the uh, my house, which would cover the extra spare bedroom for guests and the kitchen that everybody uses. Uh, uh, Brady did a great sample letter to the president, and several people have made comments on my YouTube channel here about that. Uh, if you look at the bottom, it tells how to get to that letter that needs to go to President Trump. Okay, Noah's Ark's on display for a few more days. They're coming to get them uh, sometime at the end of this month, I think, if you want to come down and see them. If you'd like to join the 777 Club, a dollar a day, 31 bucks a month, just send 31 bucks and then email drdino at drdino.com and say, I want to join, and you get your name on the plaque out there for those that are members of the 777 Club to help us stay open for free. Just make any checks to CSE, Creation Science Evangelism. Uh, let's see. The most creative sign... Contest is over. Go to drdino.com and vote. They're all up there. And you get one vote per computer. If you've got two or three computers in your house, you can go to the other computer and vote again, I guess. But uh, you can, and by next Wednesday, we will tell you the winner, like the Sea Rock City kind of stuff or Wall Drug. We've talked about all that before. First place, $250. So you can vote on the signs on the website, drdino.com. Okay. Gideon, in the book of Judges, um, Gideon and the 300 that were with him came into the outside of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers, and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal. And they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. There's 300 guys around the enemy camp blowing trumpets, shining lights. Make noise and shine the light. That's all you got to do. And the host ran and cried and fled, and the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. Here's this monster army down there, and three hundred men just made a lot of noise and shined the light, and they all started fighting each other, and Gideon's men just stood back and let them fight, duke it out. 
If you can get your enemy to start fighting each other in fighting, the battle's easy, right? It's a great lesson to learn. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, Jonathan, Saul's son, climbed up upon his hands and upon his neat feet, and his armor bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer slew after him. And the first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men, within, as it were, in half an acre of land, which a yoke of oxen might plow. And there was a trembling in the host. There was a giant army had come to attack King Saul. And the spoilers, let's see, they trembled, and the earth quaked. It was a great trembling. And the watchmen of Saul in Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude melted away, and they went on beating down one another. Whoa, this is what you want to get. Your enemy fighting each other saves a lot of bullets on your part. Let them all fight each other. Perfect. Classic Warfare 101. In Acts chapter 23, Paul had been arrested for his preaching, like a good preacher ought to be once in a while. Uh, and when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees. Now the Sadducees were those who did not believe in the resurrection, so they're sad, you see. And the other were Pharisees. He cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, and of the hope and resurrection of the dead I am called in question. And when he'd so said, there arose a dissension, an argument, a disagreement, between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. So in Acts 23, Paul used Classic Warfare 101, Get your enemy divided. Get them fighting each other makes them much easier to conquer. And if you read the passage, <coughs> he eventually, they left him alone, let him go. Okay, so uh, there arose a great dissension and the captain had to come rescue him. They were going to tear Paul apart. And so the, captain, the government got involved and rescued Paul from these morons fighting over what Paul was teaching. So Psalm chapter 8, King David said, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Classic chapter. When we look at the earth or the solar system, we should say, wow, what a mighty God we serve. But here we have Christians, God's children, I think most of them are honestly Christians, fighting each other over is the earth flat or not? And it's becoming a vicious fight in the last six years. Here's some comments on our YouTube channel yesterday. You can go, Dr. Or Kent Hovind Official, go to yesterday's broadcast. I did from Charlotte. Uh, I got in at three this morning. And Truth Faction writes, I love you, Doc, but the earth and the light came before the sun. The earth sits on a foundation. Only Jesus saves wrote, It's flat, brother, as well as being littered with remains of life turned stone. This is talking about the big monument, Devil's Tower, in Wyoming. That is obviously the neck of a volcano that they're saying is a giant tree stump. That is dumb, not true. It is a volcano. It is not a giant tree stump. Now, there were giants in the earth, and there are some remains of awfully big giants. Is that Joe Taylor book here? Uh, yeah, this is classic. Giants Against Evolution, 39 bucks. You get it straight from Joe Taylor, MountBlanco.com. But... Uh, it covers all kinds of evidence of gigantic plants and gigantic insects and gigantic people. Get a hold of Joe Taylor, MountBlanco.com. But I, I, there's no question there were giants. But that yellow, uh, uh, that volcano is not a giant tree stump. Stop saying that. You're making yourself look dumb. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Gray Wolf writes in, I would really like to see a live discussion between you, Dr. Kent, and Rob Skiba. I, I don't know. I've... I've, I've heard of Rob Skiba. I've saw, seen some of his stuff on the internet. I don't think I've ever met him. Uh, I don't want to get into a debate on this topic. I think I'm done with it. I keep trying to be done with it. It'll come up again. But this has divided Christians, and somebody's got to stop this. This is insane. <clears throat> uh, because he does a lot of experimenting, and he comes from a Baptist church like you do. Please make it happen. I think the things will really turn interesting, both for you and for us. Okay? Uh, here we go. Kana writes in, Flat Earth proves the Bible's account. So man has told you it's wrong and shows you the Helos model, heliocentric. It's, there is 666 all over that theory, yet you subscribe to it. Kana, listen carefully. The Earth goes around the sun, and it just happens to be 66,600 miles an hour. Listen to that carefully. Miles per hour. That just happens to be our current system of measuring things. You could do it in kilometers per hour or kilometers per second or any other, and you would get a different number. The number six is not evil. It comes after five. It's okay to write the number six. Actually, it's okay to write three of them in a row. 666 six, six comes after 665. Six, okay. Now, it is true Satan's going to use that, I understand. It's in Revelation 13. 
But that doesn't mean just the fact that we go around the earth, around the sun, 66,600 miles an hour, therefore the earth is flat and doesn't move. That is not logic. Okay, Think about it for five minutes. Okay. T. Carp writes in, Kent, you're wrong about the flat earth. The Bible describes it. It's flat underneath and a dome on pillars. Path is narrow, wrote yesterday. Kent, you're world champion debunking evolution when it comes to the time of Jacob's trouble and the flat earth. You're terribly weak, most likely incorrect. This is the kind of stuff I deal with on our YouTube channel every day. Read the comments. Let me give you the Hovind theory. The entire flat earth movement started, was reintroduced about 2012, six years ago, probably by atheists. Here's the reason. I'm going to give you five reasons now and save number six to the end. This is controversial. You know me, Lady Di, I try to avoid controversy, right? Okay. I think what atheists did this to see how to get Christians fighting each other. And it's working. This is most all of the people supporting the flat earth movement are doing it because they think it supports the Bible. And they're trying desperately to defend the scriptures like Romans chapter 10. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. I do appreciate your zeal. I really do. Your knowledge is sadly lacking. Okay. Um, it's to divide Christians into warring camps to make them easier to conquer in the coming war. We are headed for a time of tribulation and it's going to be against the Christians and it's coming like a freight train and we'd better get united and stand together. This warring camps is exactly what they want to do. It's working. Number three, I think somebody wants to show the world the power that they, whoever they, the Illuminati, whatever, have to make people believe anything. They laugh about it. They can get people to believe literally anything. It is bizarre, some of the things people believe. I'll show you some of those in a minute. It's to distract Christians from the real issues like evangelism, like the Great Commission, get out soul winning. Many spend hours and hours and hours on this topic rather than go win their neighbor to Christ. They're more concerned about winning their neighbor over to believing on a flat earth than they are getting them saved. Stop. Think about that. Go read what Jesus said about that. You know how much time Jesus spent on the flat earth? None. Okay. I think they want to discredit the Bible. The atheists would love, to get, would love to get you to believe that the Bible teaches the earth is flat just so they can say, see, the Bible is wrong. The Bible does not teach the earth is flat. I will show you. But if they can get people believing, wow, the Bible teaches flat earth, that whole book must be stupid. That's what they're trying to do. Okay, let me start by saying I greatly appreciate the zeal and the dedication of the flat earthers. Boy, they are dedicated. They haunt my channel. And their desire to defend God's word. I think that's noteworthy. I think that's wonderful. But you're wrong, okay? Paul said in Romans 10, I bear them record. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. This guy said, flat earth is a Jew hoax. The Bible is dead wrong. If they could get people to believe the Bible teaches the earth is flat, then they could say, see, the Bible is wrong, and it would justify their lifestyle. I don't know if it's a Jew hoax or not, but somebody started this to try to... And, and the people who started it don't believe in it. And they're laughing at you for falling for it. Is the earth flat? Surrounded by Antarctica, the ice ring, and nobody's allowed to go there because it's off limits and the government will shoot you if you walk in there. There's a great conspiracy. And NASA's all, all the pictures are lies. And all of your phone map programs, and it's all a big conspiracy. Google's involved. Everybody's, this is what they teach, okay? Everybody's involved. All the maps are wrong. For the last 2,000 years, everybody that's drawn maps of a round world, they're all lying. Okay. Well, first, let's define some words like flat. It means smooth and even, without marked lumps or indentations. I think you could take a look just about any place on the world and see it is not flat. There are mountains, okay? Mountain or mountains are mentioned 461 times in the Bible. The Bible does not teach the earth is flat. There are hills. You can, we got one right outside that door, okay? It's only three feet high, but it's a hill, right? The earth is not flat. Valley or valleys are mentioned 181 times in the Bible. The Bible does not teach the earth is flat. See, guys, you cannot have a valley if the earth is flat. You cannot have a hill. Hill or hills or the word, when we tried the word up, it crashed the computer. It said there's too many, too many of those. Okay, so hill, hills, or down are mentioned 1,255 times in the Bible. If you have a hill, it's not flat. Think about that for 20 minutes. Go ask your mother to explain it, okay? The waters prevailed upon the, exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. 
The Bible teaches there are hills. You all agree with that, right? And the Bible teaches there are mountains. Okay. The Bible says he sits on the circle of the earth. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. Now hold it. Are people who are made in God's image, Genesis 1, really grasshoppers? Or is this a, what's called a metaphor? The people, the inhabitants are, thereof, are as grasshoppers. It's called a metaphor. The Bible is full of them. And when you watch Michael Rood's program in a month when it comes out, he interjects right here a whole bunch of other examples from the Bible with his knowledge of Hebrew and Greek that the Bible is full of this. It's common, common sense. People do this all the time. The Bible says he sits on the circle of the earth. Is the earth really a circle? Well, it just so happens that I taught geometry for 15 years. There is no such thing as a circle. A circle does not exist except in imagination. It is because if it has any height at all, even the thickness of your ink, if you draw a circle on a piece of paper, your ink left behind has got a certain thickness to it. It is now a cylinder. Right? Technically, there is no such thing as a circle. It's an imaginary construct for geometry, and it's practical, and we use it all the time. But in reality, it doesn't exist. If it's got any height, the thickness of your pencil or pen, it's now a cylinder. I can dig a hole in my yard and show you the earth does have some depth. Okay? It is not a circle. We have dug holes all over. We have, actually have a post hole digger on the back of the tractor, don't we? And the, yeah. It's not, Daryl, you've been digging in the earth, in the earth for years. 2,300 feet. 2,300 feet. It's, it does have some depth. Therefore, it's not a circle. It might be a cylinder, but it's not a circle. Okay. An infinite number of circles can be drawn through any point on any sphere. I could pick a spot right here and draw circles this way, bigger ones, bigger ones, bigger ones. I could draw around this way. I could go this way, this way, this way. I could draw an infinite number of circles through any one point on a sphere. Hmm. God is, sitting, is God sitting on the circle of the earth an obvious metaphor? Yes, it is. God could be sitting on one spot on a sphere, on a ball, and still be sitting on trillions of circles. Hmm, okay. The Bible says, He stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Now hold on. Is the heaven that we see above us a curtain or a tent? Or is this a metaphor? I think it's pretty obviously a figure of speech, a metaphor. I don't know how much of this you understand with your Russian, but I'm sure Russian language has many metaphors also. Probably all languages do. Freddie, you speak fluent Spanish. Do they have metaphors? Of course. A Romanian? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now hold on a minute. Does the Almighty God have a shadow? The Bible says God is a spirit. How can a spirit have a shadow? Hmm. Think about that. That's a metaphor. Okay. I will say to the Lord of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him while I trust. Is God a brick building? Or is this a metaphor? It's obviously a figure of speech. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wing shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Is God a chicken? Does he have wings? Or is this a metaphor? Think about it. Thou hast lifted up thyself God in whose, he's talking about Belshazzar, the wicked king in Babylon, the God in whose hand thy breath is. Does God actually hold his breath and have to say, here, here's another one, here's another one. Is God holding, this is a metaphor, to hold his breath in your hand. Daniel's saying, God can shut off your air anytime he wants, but God has other things to do than sit around and hand everybody a breath every time they need one, okay? He just made the whole world covered with air, and you can breathe it anytime you want. <sighs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, beholding the four winds of the earth. Does the earth have four corners? How can a circle have four corners? Hmm. So don't tell me the Bible teaches the earth is flat. It does not teach the earth is flat. Well, the four winds, the wind should not blow... Uh, the only shape I'm aware of that has four corners is a tetrahedron. That has four corners, okay? Tetrahedron. Is the earth a tetrahedron? Is the earth... Where'd my cube earth go? I guess Nick took it in to do some video editing. Okay. 
It can't be a square either, because a square has four corners, but a square also does not exist. It's imaginary. If the square has any depth at all, it's now a prism. So it can't be a square or a circle. Okay. What's this about the four winds? Now hold it. The Bible talks about the south wind, the north wind, the changing winds, the whirlwind, the east wind, the west wind. There are winds that blow every, every possible direction you can think of. Northeast, southeast, northwest. They blow, the wind blows up sometimes, straight up. Sometimes the wind blows straight down. There are, there are more than four winds, so it's an obvious metaphor to say the four winds, or they came from the four corners of the earth. It's a metaphor. The Bible says the world is established that it cannot be moved. The flat earthers, like some of the comments I got yesterday, the earth is solid, it can't move. This is ludicrous. Is the earth really flat and unmovable? Well, let's see. The earth shook and trembled in 2 Samuel chapter 22. Apparently it moved. The earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills moved and were shaken. Oh, it moved again. Psalm 18, Psalm 99. Let the earth be moved. Okay. Isaiah 24. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Apparently the earth can be moved. So the idea that the earth is spinning and going around the sun does not contradict scripture. It's an obvious metaphor. It is so big and so heavy that you and I probably can't do much to change it and move it. It's plenty massive. Okay. The noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved. Okay, so the earth is movable. Is the earth flat? Well, let's look at the science. The Bible does not teach it's flat and unmovable. <clears throat> okay. Half of the earth is lit up and half of it is dark all the time. I have people all over the world that are friends of mine. I could call somebody right now. I could call AJ in India. I would predict probably the sun is coming up over there about now. I don't know what time zone he's in. I could find out here. Just about the opposite of us in India. We could call him right now. I got his number in my phone. He called me today. I would say, AJ, what's it doing? He said, oh, it's morning time over here. We're getting up. Well, it's getting dark here. How could the earth be half lit and half dark all the time? I have been to, let's see, 20, 37 countries, um, all 50 states. We have time zones. I think most people agree the earth is dark half the time and light half the time. Does the, skirt, does the sun have a skirt on it? Is it a flashlight going around? I mean, if indeed the earth is flat and the sun is going in a circle like you guys claim, everybody would see it all the time. It could, you can't have nighttime with your flat earth. It can't happen. Now, they will have an answer to all of these objections. This is what, I, I got such a kick out of this. It is what's called, I call, a redneck answer. I will show you redneck fixes. How many have seen those things? Honey, I fixed it. Have you seen that? <laughs> I'll show you some. The answers they give are redneck answers, redneck fixes. All right, I'll show you. There is a phenomenon on Earth called the Coriolis effect. A Frenchman named Gustave something or other Coriolis discovered back in the early 1800s that the swirling patterns of the air and of the water can be studied and mapped. Why does the Earth have swirling patterns? Well, see, back in the 1800s, they were sailing around the world, and it's very important in a sailing boat to try to get a little extra gas mileage by having the wind behind you, or the, better yet, the wind and the current behind you. So they wanted to study the currents of the oceans. Why do the oceans spin at all? Why is there a Gulf Stream? Why is there a North Atlantic current and a South Atlantic current? It's because of what is called the Coriolis effect. If you've ever played football, you know if you're throwing a pass to somebody and he's running across the field this way, <clears throat> you're going to throw the he's running this way. The quarterback has to do all kinds of mathematics in his head without thinking. How far is he away? How fast can I throw it? Where is he going to be when the ball gets there? You don't want to throw it at him. You want to throw it where he's going to be. Snipers, long-range snipers have to watch this carefully. they got to really be genius at mathematics. Because if you're shooting north or south, if you're moving at 1,000 miles an hour at the equator, and your target is moving only 900 miles an hour, because he's further north, and they do move different speeds because of the circle getting smaller, he has to figure out where to shoot based on is he shooting east, west, north, south, what angle. There's a whole lot of mathematics to a long-range shot. If you fired a missile, from Florida to Equator, you have to figure, okay, it's going to take 
30 minutes to get there. In 30 minutes, this has moved. So just like throwing the football, leading the person, you'd have to lead the target. If you're south, shoot, if you're shooting north, you have to shoot behind the target and your bullet will catch up to it or the missile. There's a whole lot of mathematics to shooting north or south long distances because of the Coriolis effect. Simple Mathematics 101. So <clears throat> the Gulf Stream in the Gulf Stream in the Gulf of Mexico swirls. Then it comes out and makes a giant swirl in the North Atlantic Ocean. You say, who cares? Well, this happened down in Pensacola. It just so happens there's an obvious sign of the Gulf Stream moving stuff. This is Pensacola Harbor. There's the city of Pensacola, where I lived for 30 years. There is a beach sticking way out here called Gulf Breeze. You've been there. There's another peninsula way out here where they have Fort Pickens and a beautiful beach for like 12 miles of white sand, okay? Why are these peninsulas out here anyway? What happened? What would form a long, skinny beach peninsula? Well, part of it is the waves coming in from the Gulf. That has a habit of knocking sand off and dragging it out and dropping it a certain distance out. That's another story. But it's interesting. The ships would come in the harbor and have to go over here to Pensacola. If you look at the Escambia River where it came down, this island is growing longer. In the last 150 years, it's grown one mile. I'll show you. You do the math, you say, hold it. This, this peninsula cannot be millions of years old. It can only be a few thousand years old. I think after Noah's flood, the Escambia River came straight out here. And gradually, because of the Gulf Stream, it is picking up sand over here, dropping it over here, and making this peninsula get longer. I'll show you. Before the Civil War, there were three forts built to protect Pensacola Harbor. There was Fort Pickens, Fort McRae, and Fort Barrancas. Now, back in those days, they wanted to protect, you know, enemy ship comes in, they want to shoot them. But their cannons didn't go very far. They you know, shooting a big steel ball. Fort Pickens could only reach that far, so they could just sail around it. So Fort McRae has what's called overlapping, overlapping range. They can, somebody can hit it. And then Fort Barrancas has another overlapping range. So they built these three forts to protect the harbor. They could have done it with one if they had cannons would shoot far enough, but they didn't. So that's what they did with three forts to protect the harbor. Now, the Gulf Stream is going this way, swirling clockwise north of the equator. What happens is it's picking up sand over here and dropping it over here. Sand is picked up from this side, dropped over here on this side. This peninsula is growing longer. This one's growing shorter. Fort McRae, built 140 years ago, has nearly disappeared. It's almost gone. It's washed into the Gulf. Fort Pickens is now a mile away from the water. That peninsula has grown a full mile just in 140 years since the Civil War. The harbor has shifted over about a mile. Why? Because of the Gulf Stream. Why is there a Gulf Stream? Because the world is spinning. If the world were not spinning, there would not be a Gulf Stream current. Here is the peninsula. There is Fort Pickens right there today. Why is it a mile away from the water? Wouldn't it be smart if your cannon can only shoot about a mile anyway? Wouldn't it be part smart to build as close as you could to the beach? If you're trying to keep, you know, shoot ships, I mean, hello, build as close as you can. Fort Barrancas today is nearly gone. Fort, I mean, Fort McRae is nearly gone. You can go to or Fort Barrancas if you want. There's what's left of Fort McRae. It's washing into the harbor because the harbor is moving. You go down and see it. Now, water north of the equator swirls counterclockwise. South of the equator, it swirls clockwise. I'll show you. Here's a video experiment. This, they put a sink right on top of the equator. This is in Ecuador. Anybody can go down there. They drew a line on the concrete right there behind the person. This is the equator. They're going to pour water in the sink and let it drain on the equator. <clears throat> now watch. Straight down. Okay. Now let's pick up the sink. Go south of the equator. 15 feet.
plug the sink, fill it with water, let it stabilize a minute. Ready, guys? Pull the plug, drop some leaves in. Why does it swirl south of the equator and not swirl on the equator? Called the Coriolis effect, because the Earth is spinning. Now let's take it north of the equator, 15 feet away from the equator. You can Google, I forget the name of this thing, but just Google, does water swirl north or south of the equator? It comes up, there's a bunch of video clips of this kind of stuff. Okay, we're going to fill the sink with, wa with water. It's going to swirl the other direction, I promise you. Pull the plug, drop in the leaves, and it swirls counterclockwise north of the equator. Your toilet will do the same thing, maybe. There are other factors involved with the toilet because it's so small, the difference in the speed of the or spinning of the earth over six inches may not be great enough to see this. Plus, it may be designed where the water coming out of the tank goes down through the jets and already starts a swirl. If you eliminated all of those factors, it would swirl one way north of the equator and the other way south of the equator. There are things that can influence a small thing like a toilet or a sink, but with still water, it'll do that. Now, there are several well-studied things that happen to light traveling over water or through different temperatures of air. If the water is warm and the air is cold, the warm water will heat up a layer of air and you can get trapped a layer of hot air trapped under the cold air. It can't find a way to escape. Normally hot air rises, cold air sinks, but if the whole thing is that way, it, it has to find a way to escape. And until then, you get a, a phenomena called inversion or lensing or mirages can happen. Which one is the ship? Mirages are well-studied phenomena. They happen because close to the surface, especially when it's really hot in the desert, people think they're seeing water. Oh, there's water. They're not seeing water. It's the hot air coming off the desert and it's making layers in the air called inversion. So it is possible for you to see something that's actually a hundred miles away to think you see something a hundred miles away when it's not there at all called a mirage. How about you ever driven on the hot highways? It looks like there's water dancing out there. That what? It's not. There's no water there. It's a mirage. It is possible with atmospheric lensing with a curved earth to see over the horizon and see a city that is not visible. It is actually possible because of atmospheric layers to see the sun long after it's gone down because the air bends the light. So the flat earthers will say, ah, so on some days you can look out and see Chicago from 60 miles away. That is possible depending on the water temperature, the air temperature, and what kind of lensing. You're, that's correct. It could happen. Why doesn't it happen every day, fellas? Some days it happens, some days it doesn't. Here's a flat earther put this up. He said, atmospheric lensing bends light downward. The science is the same as that of a lens. They're trying to say, because you can't always see the bottom story. You look at a tall building across the water. Most days, the bottom few floors of the building are invisible. You only see the top part of the building, like this picture right here. On a totally flat surface, you just made this much disappear due to atmospheric lensing. So they will look at a city across water, which has a curve to it, and you can't see the bottom five floors or ten floors of the building. And they'll say, well, yeah, that's because of atmospheric lensing. They'll try to use the phenomena that actually proves their theory wrong to prove it's right. This is one of their redneck fixes. I'll get into that in a minute, okay? Flat Earth Ultimate Debunking Obliteration YouTube. There is a fabulous video out. It's only 15 minutes long, I think. It shows 10 simple ways, scientific ways, to debunk the Flat Earth. That's the title of it. Go to YouTube, type in Flat Earth Ultimate Debunking Obliteration. Okay, now... The Earth is a ball. It has a radius. You can do all the math on this. It's not that complicated. A six-foot man should see just under three miles to the horizon. The Golden Gate Bridge was built. The pillars, the support pillars, are about three-quarters of a mile apart. I think it's 4,000 feet. In 4,000 feet, both pillars are perpendicular to the Earth, but they're two inches out of parallel. Hmm. Why? Because the Earth is round, okay? It is curved. They had to build them out of parallel. It's, now, it is possible for a six-foot person to see another six-foot person six miles away. 
they would see down to the surface of the earth and then see their head sticking up over there. You can go to Lake Pontchartrain in uh, New Orleans. There's power lines going across that Lake Pontchartrain. You can see the curvature of the earth right there with those power lines. And it's not a mirage, it's not atmospheric lensing. The earth is curved, okay? In the northern hemisphere, you see certain star patterns and constellations. They're different from what you see in the southern hemisphere. If the earth was flat, everybody in the world could see the North Star. Why can't people south of the equator see the North Star? Why can't they see the Big Dipper? Well, they can see part of it. Well, Alaska is the land of the Big Dipper. They use that as the... the Alaska is the land of the... You were up in Alaska for... When you walk out, the Big Dipper is literally right in your face. Right in your face. Right there. The whole constellation is, which it is not here. It's not here. If you take pictures, time-lapse photography of the stars, you'll see them moving, appear to be moving, around a spot called the North Star. If you go further north, that spot moves higher and higher. Alaska is latitude, uh, let's see, 60, you're up about... Uh, Arctic Circle, right on the Arctic Circle. So you're 23 degrees off the, okay. North Fairbanks, right on, literally yeah, on the Arctic okay. Circle. Okay. So the North Star, if you get on the North Pole, the North Star is above you up here. Where we are, we have to see the North Star about this angle. How can that be if the Earth is flat? How could this constellations be different? They have a redneck answer for it. Okay, there's a, you can make a pendulum. I've done this before. We need to get one of these dinosaur adventure land. You get a big heavy weight like a bowling ball. Let it swing back and forth like a pendulum. It will gradually start to turn. Now a pendulum will not change its direction unless acted on by an outside force. So if you have a pendulum that is swinging, if you were on the North Pole swinging a pendulum from a helicopter, you would see the Earth turn under your pendulum. If you're on the equator, you would not see it turn because it's going to be swinging and going to be following straight with you, okay? So on the equator, it won't work. It's called the Foucault pendulum. Any distance between the equator and the North Pole, you will get a different angle, which is measurable and actually predictable based on your latitude, okay? Many large museums, Smithsonian, etc., they have a full cult pendulum with a big two-ton ball swinging back and forth, and it gradually moves over and knocks the pins down. It's a clock. How many have seen those before? Using the pendulum as a clock. Why? That's, it wouldn't work unless the Earth were spinning. The Earth is turning, okay? Flat Earthers dismiss all the photographic evidence. I mean, there have been thousands of pictures taken from space showing the Earth is round. It's curved. Okay. Now, they, will, they sent up a rocket called the Go Fast Rocket. They went up, uh, I think they said 73 miles, I believe. Some, private, some guys, privately funded, sent up a rocket and took a bunch of pictures. And they could see a little bit of curvature, and they said, well, that's because of the lenses and the camera. Well, guys, if the Earth is indeed like they tell us, 8,000 miles in diameter, let's make one inch equal to 100 miles. We would have to make it, the Earth about seven mile or seven feet across. If we made a seven foot globe, that would be one inch is a hundred miles. They went up three quarters of an inch. If you were three quarters of an inch above a seven foot ball, you probably wouldn't see a lot of curve, would you? No. All the photographic evidence. Here's Florida. There are tons of photographic evidence showing the Earth is indeed a curve, they will dismiss this with their redneck answer. The shadow that the Earth casts on the Moon. If the Moon gets between the Sun and the Earth, we have an eclipse where we can't, certain people, a little slice of the Earth, cannot see the Sun. It's not big enough to cover the whole Earth. The shadow of the Moon is too small. Now, the shadow of the Earth is big enough to cover the whole Moon, but the shadow of the moon is not big enough to cover the whole earth. It actually makes two parts to the shadow, the really dark part and the umbra and the penumbra. Who cares? You can get into all that. But just last year, the, the dark shadow of the moon went clear across the United States, didn't it? This is predictable years ahead of time, exactly where it's going to fall, the shadow, because it's obvious the, earth, the moon is round. It's obvious the sun is round. It's obvious all the other planets are round. It's also, when the Earth makes a shadow on the Moon, ah, another eclipse, it lasts long enough that if the Earth were indeed a flat circle and the Moon is moving, the shadow should be oval-shaped instead of round. We're getting a round shadow all the time. 
So the shadow on the Earth of the Earth on the Moon over long periods of time proves that the Earth is round and that it spins. Interesting. The Earth's shadow has a curve to it. That's because the Earth has a curve to it. Okay. Direct observation over many centuries has proven clearly that all of the planets and the Sun spin. The Sun spins around once every 25 days. You can see the spots moving on the solar sunspots. The planets all are spinning. That's been directly observed. They see them spinning. Now, why would God make one planet, i.e. Earth, different? God seems to like to do things the same. He designed most animals with two bones in the forelimb and a single humerus and radius and ulna. God uses the same pattern over and over. This is a design pattern that's really good. He uses, most animals are designed with two eyes so they get binocular vision, two nostrils, two ears so they can hear and determine distances and, and direction of sounds coming from them, and one mouth in the front. That's because we have a common designer, not a common ancestor. You evolutionist morons need to wake up on that one. Somebody designed all these animals. Now, a drop of water, when it drips, will automatically pull itself into a circle, a sphere, a ball, for two reasons. Primarily surface tension of the water. But also, if it, water is dripping, each molecule of water is attracted to every other molecule. A little tiny bit of gravity. All masses attract each other. That's what gravity is, the attraction of masses. A large mass will attract a small mass, like a, the Earth is huge, it will attract a person and pull you down toward the Earth. Even if you're on the South Pole, it pulls you this way, and you don't think you're upside down at all. You're not. I've been to Australia. I didn't feel upside down at all. The, you're, because you're because gravity is pulling you perpendicular to the center. So these flat earthers will say, well, if you're on the South Pole, you should be upside down and fall off. You're assuming gravity is out here someplace. No, gravity is in the center, pulling you toward the center. So yes, you can walk completely around a round ball and not even know you're walking around a round ball. If you had a giant round magnet and you had magnetic shoes on and magnetic suit on, you could walk around the round magnet. Think about it for five minutes, okay? So if the Earth were flat, just simple gravity would automatically pull it back into round. Because all the particles are attracting each other, it's just like a drop of water, the Earth should pull itself round. It would. Now, because it spins, it bulges a little bit at the equator, like I do anymore, but that's okay. Another story. And because of the slight bulge, it pulls the poles in, but it is so minor, so minor. I think it's about a 20 mile difference. On an 8,000 mile globe, the 20 miles is not noticeable. They say if you took the Earth and shrank it down to the size of a cue ball for pool, the Earth would be smoother and rounder than the cue ball. So that little 20 mile difference of polar uh, contraction and equatorial expansion is insignificant. They say the Earth is pear-shaped. It is extremely slightly pear-shaped because of those things, okay? Because of the spin and the slight bulge. If it were going a lot faster, it would be out like a frisbee. But because of its spin, once a day, 1,038 miles an hour at the equator, zero at the poles, it does have a slight bulge, but it's insignificant on the big picture of things. You can take a, a well, we've got to do this experiment here, Dinosaur Adventureland. You get two lead balls. Lead is not magnetic. It can't be influenced by a magnet. Get two lead balls on the end of a rod and hang it from another rod. Then park two more big lead balls next to it. Near it, near it, not, not touching. Just get two heavy lead balls. This thing will automatically turn over and touch them. They can actually measure the torsion. How much does it deflect it? It, it puts a pressure on it because of gravity. The mass of this ball is attracting the mass of this ball. They do all kinds of experiments on YouTube. You can see the experiments. They'll take a, a ball a weight hanging from a... Uh, uh, spring to measure how much it weighs, to precisely to the thousandth of a gram. Then they just slide a big lead ball under it. Don't touch it. Just slide under it. And all of a sudden it gets heavier. Why would it get heavier just by sliding a lead ball under it? It's not magnetic attraction. It's gravitational attraction. Because masses attract each other. That's the phenomena that God created called gravity. Okay. Every particle of Earth attracts every other particle. 
the Earth would automatically pull itself into a round ball if it were flat. Now, flat earthers have an answer to just about every theory you can bring up and every question. I'm sure they've got an answer to all of these, and there'll be 50 YouTubes made on this broadcast. Enjoy yourself. Okay. I've not seen any answer that cannot be refuted, but it's a waste of time to me. I have a different dragon to slay, evolution. The only reason I'm taking tonight's program on this is because, we're, A, we're getting a lot of comments on it, and B, this is dividing Christians into two warring camps. I think it's serious. I think somebody's laughing at you. Their answers remind me of redneck fixes. Hey, honey, I fixed it. The hood won't blow up anymore. Baby redneck chair and teething ring combination. Hold the baby and give him something to chew on. Freddy, <laughs> you got a baby coming in a few weeks? Here you go, brother. Get a water. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? How about this? Lawnmower wheel broke. Ah, oh, it's okay, honey. I fixed it. <laughs> there, I fixed it. Flat tire. No problem. No problem. How about this one? Redneck fix. I love this. Hundreds of them on the internet about redneck fixes. The answers you flat earthers give to these questions, like, why can't we see the sun all the time? Oh, well, because of perspective. You have no clue what you're talking about, okay? They'll say, well, the sun's only 30,000 miles up there, some, some ridiculous number. No, it is 93 million miles away, and it spins, and we go around it, and it's 880,000 miles in diameter. The science is correct on all that. Now, I understand NASA has lied before, and they will lie again, no question. And they're not against starting cons conspiracies. They started one with the flat earth, and you fell for it. That's the conspiracy. Yeah. That's their la okay, Hovind theory. I think this was started re reintroduced six years ago to see if Christians would fall for it, so they could laugh at them, and they're laughing at you, to divide Christians, and that's working, to show the people that they have power to make them believe anything, to distract Christians from the real issues, to discredit the Bible, and number six, to give Satan and his fallen angels something to laugh about. They know they can get some people to believe anything. I think they're laughing at you for believing this. Millions of Christians are using the fish symbol, thinking this is a Christian symbol. You husbands and wives, get alone, get away from the children, and Google Egyptian fish god and see where that symbol came from. Stop using that, okay? They're laughing at you. There are over a billion Muslims now that the devil has got them thinking they are doing God's service by killing Christians. Don't they? They really believe that. Boy, if I kill a Christian, God's happy with me. The devil is laughing at you for falling for something so stupid. Many millions of people believe they evolved from an ape-like ancestor. You evolutionists who believe this is your grandpa, the devil is laughing at you. He's glad you believe it, and he really likes the fact that you're teaching it to other kids. But he's laughing at you, for he knows it's not true, and he's laughing at you. Many millions of people believe the Big Bang where nothing exploded and made everything. Think about that for five minutes. I've had them tell me in debates, they say, well, yeah, everything was squeezed into a dot smaller than a period on a page. You couldn't squeeze a gallon of milk into a dot smaller than a period on a page, let alone the whole universe. What is wrong with you? <laughs> the devil is laughing at you for believing something so stupid. Wake up, man, think about it, okay? There are 15 million Mormons believing that they will someday become God and have thousands of wives if they obey Joseph Smith. I had two of them come to my door when I first moved to Pensacola. They said, Mr. Hovind, we'd like to talk to you about the Lord. I said, that'd be great, fellas. Whose Lord would you like to talk about, yours or mine? They said, oh, we serve the same God. I said, oh, no, no, you got a very different God. I said, does your God have a body like mine? They said, yeah. I said, well, my Bible says God is a spirit. I said, does your God live on the planet Kolob? Mm -hmm. They said, yeah, he does. I said, does your God have thousands of wives? Mm -hmm. Does your God have normal sexual relations with those wives to produce spirit babies in heaven? They said, oh, yeah. The Book of Mormon, right over there. There's another one right here. Uh, they said, oh, yeah, he produces spirit babies in heaven. Now, he does that in heaven with the same way human couples do it on earth. The human couple produces the body, and your God in heaven produces the spirit in the same way. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yep, right. Normal sexual relations. Okay. I said, now, if it's a good spirit baby up in heaven, it comes down and gets a white-skinned body. But if it's a bad spirit baby, it gets a black-skinned body. Is that what you guys believe? They were quiet for a minute. One of them looked at the other one. He said, well, you're not supposed to know that. But, yeah, that is what we teach, and that is what you teach, okay? Um, I said, now, guys, there are two babies born 
on earth every second. Two a second are born. That's not how many attempts are made. Trust me, there are many more than that. But two a second are born. And your God is producing a spirit baby in the same way for each one. I don't think you could last five seconds to a second. He has got 15 million moron Mormons believing Joseph Smith. What a pervert that fellow was. Think about it, guys. And the devil is laughing at you for believing that idiot Joseph Smith. And you poor Mormons, you need to th stop and think, man, have you analyzed what you really believe and thought about it? You have to have your holy underwear on or the devil can get you. They do. They wear holy underwear with a Masonic Lodge symbol over each nipple and on their thigh. You know I'm telling you the truth. The devil is having a heyday. He thinks this is hilarious. He's got 15 million people believing this. That's how, they're laughing. There are 8 million Jehovah's Witnesses believe they will inherit the kingdom if they work hard. Exactly what Cain did. God, look at my works, okay? The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. The devil has deceived so many people in so many ways. So many false religions out there. Which one's right? They're all teaching something else. Evolution's the biggest and dumbest religion I've ever heard of. And he's got how many millions believe that stuff? And push it. Is the earth flat? No. Now, lots of Kansas is flat, lots of Nebraska is flat, a whole bunch of Texas is flat, okay? The Bonneville salt flats are flat. But no, the earth is round and it's a ball. A beach ball looks flat to an ant crawling on it, doesn't it? And an ant compared to this beach ball, if you took a human compared to the size of the earth, the ant would be about a billion times too big. It'd be more like the fingernail on the ant, if they had fingernails, to be the size of the human on a beach ball that size. Of course it looks flat, okay? A basketball looks flat to the ant crawling it to... The curvature of the earth cannot be even visible until you get about 50 miles up. That's simple mathematics. The earth is a ball. It is 1,715.5 miles in diameter at the equator. It spins 1,038 miles an hour at the equator. It goes around the sun, and none of these facts contradict the Bible. The Bible is correct. There are metaphors about the earth having four corners. It's a metaphor, fellas. Learn some English, okay? It is scientifically a fact. The earth spins. The earth goes around the sun. And nobody pays me to teach this. I'm not part of any conspiracy. I didn't get a letter from the Illuminati saying you better teach this, okay? I'm about as anti-New World Order as they get. I spent nearly nine years in prison for standing up for my beliefs, okay? And I would do it again if I had to. I think we should stand up for what's right, okay? I am not hired by anybody to teach these things. This is the science. Now, I think the Earth can spin and go around the sun and still be the center of God's attention. It doesn't have to be the center of the universe with everything going around it. It doesn't have to be. If all the stars are going around the Earth, you know how fast they'd have to be going? Much simpler to say the Earth is spinning, causing them to look like they're going. They could be sitting perfectly still and look like they're moving across the sky just by the spin of the Earth. That's simple. Common Sense 101. They couldn't move fast enough to go around the Earth every 24 hours. They would have to go a zillion times more than the speed of light. It's not happening. I'm sorry. It's just not happening. If the Earth is flat and the Sun is going in a circle around it, what is, what is the force causing the Sun to change directions all the time? To make anything go in a circle like that, you would have to have something holding it in. Well, that's what gravity is. Where's the, where's the string holding the sun on this tether so it stays in a circle around the earth? I feel sorry for you flat earthers. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get a thousand negative comments and people are going to unsubscribe. Good. We don't want you. Okay, go somewhere else. But I want to help. I am concerned for the bigger picture that we have got Christians fighting each other and this is what concerns me. I think it's dumb. I think you fell for the line of Satan, and I think God made the world, and God loves the world, and we are the center. This is the only place where life exists. This is it. And you need to be saved and born again to go to heaven. So, was that controversial enough, Jeff? Yes, it was. I think so. Good. Rough.
All right, come visit Dinosaur Adventure Land. Subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, or if you don't like us, go away. And you guys that have 14 accounts, pretending you're 14 different people so you can make comments, get a job. Get out of your mother's basement. I saw a sign yesterday, McDonald's is hiring. Go get a job. Okay, thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. <laughs>